Hi, I'm Loretta Filipov, and um, my husband Al was killed on September 11th. He was on the first airplane that went into the World Trade Center, and I thought things were hopeless, and I thought my world, as I knew it, was coming to an end. But sanity prevailed, and I managed to find this wonderful group called September 11 Families for Peaceful Tomorrows. They were all people like me, are all people like me, who uh, had the same thoughts and ideas and the same feelings of hopelessness, and all lived through the tragic event. And um, you knew that you were with family. I like to call them my best friends that I never wanted to know. I think they've sustained me over the last 10 years. The knowing that I was with people who were like me, knowing I didn't have to explain my sadness or my tear, knowing that we were all on the same wavelength was very, very helpful. A year after September 11th in September of 2002, I initiated the Al Filipov Peace and Justice Forum. It was easy to have a living memorial to remember my husband, to celebrate the way he lived his life and not how he died. And uh, he loved to talk, he loved to tell stories, and he's the one that we would have all talked to to help us make sense of what happened. He, we would have had many, many conversations in our house and with friends about what happened on 9-11. So the idea of having speakers come to perhaps inform us, to educate us about what they knew, and we did it in a safe environment where people could ask the hard questions if they chose. And uh, we've been doing that for the last 10 years. I'm very proud of that. We bring a speaker each year to talk about issues on, of peace with justice. That also keeps me putting one foot in front of the other. I know there are a lot of people struggling with a lot of issues about this, about what happened on 9-11, and about uh, issues involving their loved one. And I think you just have to remember that people all over the world suffer every day from their 9-11s. There is no fanfare, and there's no money, and there's not a lot of support in a lot of cases. And I think we have to think about how do we want to live in the global community? How do we want to live on this earth? How do we want to be with our neighbors near and far? And it's helpful when I think of other people and the suffering that they go through. For me, this is, this is minor. Yes, there's a void. There's a void in my life. But I've found a lot of wonderful people. It can be lonely if I dwell on it. My life, um, I, miss, I miss the spontaneous things that we did together. Uh, so I can't dwell on that. But I have wonderful grandchildren, wonderful family, so that's important to me. But I don't ever complain about anything that's happening unless I'm prepared to tell somebody about it. So if the whole world is saying, oh, this war is terrible, I call my senators or I write a letter. If uh, we're talking about uh, energy and how to save, I do something about it. 
At the present time, they're installing a new thermostat in my home so that they can control my air conditioning at peak hours. So it's kind of like put your money where your mouth is. Um, I probably didn't have as much time for that before or think about it as much, but I'm more aware of, I was always aware and I always had a political feeling, aptitude for what was going on, but I'm much more aware on what this is doing, what, what we're doing, what my country does and how it's affecting people in the Sudan, in Somalia, uh, in South Africa. It's not just me, it's the whole global community. And I do care. I'm only one person, but I think if there were many of me to do the same thing, we could make a better and more peaceful world. I'm convinced of it. I have hope. Yeah, so in spite of the sadness and the void in my life, I think there's hope. I just have to look at my grandchildren or, or my sons and their families and think, we want to make this world better for them. And we're going to do it. Education, big part of it. So when you hear that they're cutting the budget on education so that we could send more soldiers to some immoral and illegal war, say something. Speak up. Will it change anything? Because most people say, oh, well, it's not going to do anything. I'm told by a congresswoman in my town that my, let, my voice is worth 500 voices. Well, in Congress, in Washington, it might be worth 1,000 voices, I don't know. But just think, if she gets five phone calls, that's a lot of voices. And then she wins because the other people on her committee may not have gotten any. So I follow that rule.